So, three forces are applied to this body. They can be reduced to one resultant force using the tip-to-tail method. The resultant force R replaces forces A, B, and C. But where is the line of action located? Where do I apply the resultant force? Let's try vector notation. Two forces applied to this body reduces to a resultant force by summing the x and y components. Again, the resultant force replaces forces A and B, but where is the line of action? Where do I apply the resultant force? To find the location of a resultant, we must find the concurrent point of the two vectors A and B. Vector A can act anywhere on its line of action, as can B. Where their two lines of action meet is called the concurrent point of the two vectors. It is convenient to slide both vectors to this concurrent point, as it enables us to use the parallelogram method to find their resultant vector. This resultant can also act anywhere on its line of action. Since our forces are originally shown acting on the edges of the box, let's show their action the same way. Now that you've seen this visually, let's look at a way to calculate where the concurrent point of these two vectors A and B is in space. This concurrent point has an X and Y position relative to our coordinate system. If we know the coordinates of a point on the line of action of each vector, and the slope of the line of action of each vector, we can use point-slope form to find where they intersect. For vector A, we are given a point on its line of action. We can substitute this point into our point-slope equation as the values for x1 and y1. Then, the slope of the line of action can be found from the vector components. Since they are the change in x and change in y of the vector, they are also the slope of the line of action. Given b in vector notation and a point on its line of action, we can again use point-slope form to create an equation for its line of action. The intersection point of these two lines is whatever point satisfies both equations. Here, we have solved each equation for y then set them equal to one another. You can then solve the resulting equation for x and plug this x back into either original equation to find the corresponding y. We now know where in our coordinate system the reaction of the two vectors must be acting. This method can be used to find the resultant of multiple vectors. Recall the resultant AB and its line of action. We can intersect it with the line of action of vector C and slide these two vectors to their concurrent point. Using the parallelogram method again, we can find their resultant vector. It can be moved along its line of action to any point most conveniently to the edge of the box. This vector is the resultant of vectors A, B, and C combined. The order in which we combine the vectors doesn't matter. We can, alternatively, combine vectors B and C, then combine their resultant with vector A to obtain the same resultant of all vectors A, B, and C. Keep in mind the concurrent point of resultant B and C and vector A. 
Recall combining vectors A and B, then combining their resultant with vector C. Together, the concurrent point of resultant AB and vector C and the concurrent point of resultant BC and vector A define the direction of the resultant ABC. This makes sense as they are both points on its line of action. Let's look at the resultant of vectors A, B, and C algebraically. These forces are in pounds. Given that the two endpoints of B and C are as shown, we can find that in vector notation, C equals 0.5i plus 8j in pounds, and B equals 8i minus 5j in pounds. Draw their lines of action, slide them to their concurrent point, and use parallelogram method to find that resultant BC equals 8.5i plus 3j in pounds. Given that vector A equals negative 2i plus 12j in pounds, use the same process to find their resultant a, B, C is equal to 6.5i plus 15j in pounds. And that is how we find the location of the line of action for a resultant vector.